immediately after reviews on Alienware's 34 QD OLED monitor and Sony's A95K QD OLED TV came out, I started seeing a bunch of myths pop up. Well, today I'm gonna bust those myths and set the record straight. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison, and in the age of the internet where assumptions run rampant and misinformation spreads like wildfire, a lack of information can spark some serious misunderstanding. So I'm gonna take a deep dive into QD OLED to talk about what it can do, what it doesn't do, and put some real context around some of the measurements and performance aspects of this technology. Having tested a TV that uses QD OLED and now tested a computer monitor that uses the same kind of panel technology, I've learned a lot and I'm excited to share that with you. So strap in my friends, it's time to get down and nerdy on this thing we're calling QD OLED. Before we take the plunge, I just wanted to say thanks to all of you who've sent in questions via the comments section and let me know what you wanna see and what you don't. It's hugely valuable and I take it all into consideration best as I can. Thank you. If you're new around here, consider liking and subscribing. I'd love to see you right back here in the next video. Okay, let's do this. Now, as I start to dig deep into this Alienware monitor, I just want to give a shout out to my friend and colleague, Luke Larson. You've seen him on the channel. He does all of our PC, Mac, and monitor reviews, and he's got a great video on this QD OLED monitor from the perspective of a longtime PC expert. Be sure to go check that out for the computing perspective with all the really important key takeaways. Now, attacking this thing from the display nerd side of things, the first myth I want to debunk right now is this a pentile display? And the answer is no, it is not. It is an RGB subpixel layout. Here, I'll show you. I've got a little USB microscope here, and if I just pull back the focus a little bit, ah, there we go. There's a red, green, and blue for each pixel. Ah, that's better, isn't it? I mean, not really for me. First off, I don't even know how Samsung would pull off Pentile with a QD OLED. That never made a bunch of sense to me anyway. But honestly, even if it was Pentile, I wouldn't be mad. Now, for those of you who are wondering what in Satan's fiery toilet I'm talking about, Pentile displays started getting noticed with Samsung's earliest AMOLED phone displays. And some folks got all worked up because in a Pentile arrangement, rather than every pixel having its own red, green, and blue subpixels, each pixel shared a color subpixel with its neighboring pixel. So usually green was shared because green OLEDs take the most power, so with two of them, they could lighten the load. Thing is, if you're sharing a pixel with your neighbor, then you can never have a situation where one row of pixels is fully on and the very next row is fully off, which mathematically calls into question the resolution of the display. And honestly, that was only ever really a problem back in the 720p days. And I don't know why we are still wasting time talking about it. So let's just stop, okay? The Alienware 34 QD OLED is RGB. Praise be, hallelujah, amen. Let's move on. Uh, except we kind of can't move on entirely because if we go back to this image of the pixel arrangement, you know what I see? Three things. One, the green and the red are bigger than the blue. Also, two, you can't really see it here, but the green and the red subpixels are hexagonal in shape, which is neither here nor there. It's just kind of interesting to me. Finally, three, if we go to a fine black line, I see the quantum dots in the black area faintly glowing. Now, does that mean anything? I'll get to that. Anyway, these printed red and green quantum dots, which are glowing because the blue OLED lights are making them glow, are bigger than the blue. And that brings me to the next myth I need to bust. Are QD OLED panels the most color accurate panels on the planet? No, they are not inherently the most color accurate on the planet. When this monitor starts going to bright white, the red and green pull way ahead of the blue in brightness. You can see that in this test here. As the white square in the screen gets brighter in the gray test slides, the green gets hotter and then at its brightest, the red catches up and there's blue way down there. So what does this really mean? Well, it means that to get the best color accuracy out of this monitor, I had to pull the green way back and pull the red back just a bit less. That helped out with color accuracy right up to about 600 nits. But then everything above 600 nits, and yes, it does get brighter than that, that's next, got out of whack. Honestly, this is not gonna be a big deal for most folks, but it does show that what Sony did with its A95K QD OLED TV in terms of processing was no small feat because that TV, which uses the same panel, is dead on balls accurate. 
that's an industry term. Which means that Sony's processing is what made its TV overcome this inherent aspect of the display technology. And that had me wondering how Samsung's QD OLED, <coughs> sorry, QD display TV will perform when it comes out because it is coming, trust me on that. Next myth, the Alienware 34 maxes out at 600 nits. That is false. It maxes out at just over 1,000 nits, just like the Sony A95K did, and here's all the proof you need. I'm testing, I'm testing, and here. Little 2% window, 1,000 nits. Little 5% window, 1,000 nits. It is only when you get to a 10% window or larger that the display caps out at 600 nits. Why it does that is Dell's move, but it doesn't really matter because you don't want a section of screen, say, this big, getting over 600 nits when you're sitting mere inches away from it. It's a different story on a TV where you sit many feet away and the extra brightness and large patches can be employed without making you squint. So those reviews you're seeing where they say the display didn't reach 1000 nits, they tested incorrectly in my opinion. Hey, it happens, we're humans, but also that's wrong. What is true, however, is that this monitor does not go over 290 nits in SDR and I have no idea why. That was not the right call in my opinion, just because other monitors do. And from a comparison standpoint, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Also, this monitor seems to take anything over 600 nits and just go right to 1000. There's not gonna be a bunch of bright highlight detail like there was on the Sony A95K TV. Also, also, there is a little bit of black crush. Not enough to be a huge problem for everyone, but OLEDs don't like to come out of black, and that is still a thing here. It'd be mitigated some if this monitor did its own tone mapping, but it doesn't. Myth number four, if you're counting. The display doesn't do true black when there is light in the room. Okay, all right, this is kind of my fault. In my Sony A95K review, I casually mentioned that when the TV was off, the display wasn't jet black like the WRGB OLED next to it, and somehow that translated to, it doesn't do real black. Not true, this display does hit true black in measurements and clearly has pure blacks when looking at content. Now, it is true that if you beam a light right onto the screen, the screen doesn't appear black, but when you turn on the monitor and start using it, all the contrast is there. Let me be clear, blacks are black. If you were to watch dark gray test slides or play a really dark game in a room flooded with light and shine a spotlight on the screen, it would be hard to see the content. The last of your concerns would be how black the blacks were because it would all be just much. And you know what? That's true of any monitor. So just don't do that. Now what's going on is that the QD OLED has what's called a top display as opposed to a bottom display, meaning the goods are right there in front of you. There are no filters in front of it. So the screen looks a bit different, just like Plasma did. And people are still talking about how great the blacks were on plasmas, which I get it. I still have a plasma kicking around at home, but this is way better technology in every way. And in side-by-side -side comparisons with a WRGB OLED from Sony, black levels were visibly indistinguishable. So again, I think it would be great to move on. Next, myth number five, ABL or auto brightness limiter is still a problem. No. It is not, not here anyway. It does cap really large swaths of brightness at 600 nits, but the annoying issue where the screen goes bright for a second, then visibly dims down on you is not something I've seen here. Specular highlights and average picture level are well blended for a stable picture. That annoying real-time dimming effect is something I haven't seen for a while. I know it is happening on some older OLEDs out there and I'm sorry for the frustration, I get it. Anyway, ABL is not a thing you have to worry about with this display. You know what else I don't think we'll have to worry about? Myth number six, burn-in is still a concern. <sighs> Look, burn-in on WRGB OLEDs can still happen if you watch CNN in vivid mode for seven hours a day, every day of your life. Yeah, under those conditions, we've seen it can happen. It's organic material and has a half-life that doesn't much care for that kind of harsh treatment. Still, most people are not suffering from burn-in on their OLED TVs. If you have, I'm sorry, that sucks. But also, you are in the minority by like a lot. The complaints of burn-in just aren't coming in, folks. Someone just tested the Switch OLED for like 3,800 hours and barely saw a wisp of burn-in. Anyway, with QD OLED, the potential for burn-in is even further reduced. Finally, and this isn't really a myth, but I wanted to have like seven things because lucky YouTube number, I guess. This is not a TV. It's not a good substitute for a TV. It doesn't perform as well as a TV. 
And I'm not comparing it to a TV any further than to recognize that TVs are superior in picture quality to computer monitors. That's because they have processing that monitors don't. And you want it that way because processing equals input lag and you don't want input lag. Anyway, I'm sure you recognize that this monitor has a 21 by nine aspect ratio. So while you can watch movies and TV shows on it and you can play console games on it, you're gonna have black bars on the left and right, which is not only annoying, but also just kind of a shameful waste of screen real estate. It looks gorgeous. It's just, well, black bars. You get it. I will say though that if you wanted to Netflix on one part of the screen and chill in a Discord chat on the remaining portion of the screen, it would be very well suited for such a thing. So I mean, knock yourself out. Anyway, that's the story on the Alienware 34 QD OLED monitor. It is a monitor and it is fantastic, but it does not perform as well as the Sony A95K TV. And that's okay because it's not supposed to. But now you know how this display tech works, what it can do and can't do, and why you may or may not want to buy it. Thanks as always for watching everyone. What do you think of this kind of deep dive video? Did you make it all the way to the end with me? Let me know down in the comments. Please consider liking and subscribing. And here's two other videos I think you'll like.